Here's some lily of the valley, and its scientific name is Convalaria mujalis. mujalis. I call it lily of the valley, and it was my grandma Rutledge's favorite flower, and she had a bed along her, between her house and her driveway that was just full of them. But they're also known as May Lily. <laughs> they're blooming in April right now. May Bells, Our Lady's Tears, Mary's Tears, or French Mugate Day Boys, something like that. They are of the Asparagaceae family. And I actually um, am finding more and more and more plants in that uh, asparagus family. And on my website, they're all going to be linked, put together on a list. And that's so interesting to me. The name uh, Conver Convalaria is Latin word convaleus, which means valley. So that is uh, why it's called uh, Lily of uh, the Valley. Um, the name... Majalis uh, means belonging to May, which is when the flower blooms, although everything is blooming here early. I absolutely love my wallflowers over there. So each month has a birth flower, just like each month has a designated birth stone. And the one for May is Lily of the Valley. And come to think about it, Grandma Rutledge's husband, Grandpa Rutledge, his birthday was May 16th. Maybe that's why she liked it. The flowers are often used in bridal bouquets because it symbolizes purity, humility, and virtue. And people in the 1800s, which was the Victorian era, believed that the lily of the valley meant a return of happiness. I kind of like that. Another legend is that the flower fell in love with the nightingale song, and so it blooms only when the nightingale bird returns to the woods in May. Lily of the valley prefers shade although I have mine in a sunny area and they do just fine. They're considered uh, woodland plants uh, and the variety that is named Montana is native and known as American Lily of the Valley, but I have no idea if that's my variety. The plant is only about six to 12 inches tall. And each plant has two to three ellipse shaped oval leaves. Yeah, I can always see the, the leaf here. Let me zoom in. This leaf shape right here, it's so identifiable for Lily of the Valley. And it stays like this for quite a while. So flower stems rise from the center of each leaf clump. So let's see. Oh, so we have down in here. This is a leaf clump. We have one leaf, two leaves, and then a stem. I don't know if you can see that keep getting my shadow in the image. The uh, flowers are one-sided, so you can see that on here, and um, they have five to ten bell shapes, and they bloom for about three to four weeks. That's a long time. The blooms are hard to see, <laughs> and I always have to sit down with mine and uh, sometimes get on the ground or under them to appreciate the the bell shape and that's usually what I do when I try to photograph them so I think that's why grandma probably had them in a raised bed on her driveway 
so that she could uh, easily um, stand without having to get on the ground and uh, appreciate the little bitty bell flowers. I moved so I wouldn't uh, get my shadow in my film photography and now you can't see the bells as well. I learned another new word. I've seen this before and I probably am not going to remember it, but racemy or racemoid is a flower stem which has no branches and each flower has a stalk off the, the racemy. In contrast, a panicle is a stem whereby branched off stalks come off of it which contains flowers. So each ra racemy of the lily of the valley has five to ten flowers. So you see as they're saying, we're looking at the back side, this stem has uh, no leaves on it. It's naked. Look at this sweet little one that's jumped over there. How the flower is just coming. You got the shape of the leaves, two leaves, and the flower coming out the back. Yeah, so we're, we're in the back of the yard and we're digging this ditch and we're going to be putting pipe along here. So I didn't know what was gonna to happen to my lily the valley. I was glad to see uh, they missed it, but some of them went over there. <laughs> And I think I'm gonna leave them there. Decided to pick this one so you can see the little bell shapes better. Oh my goodness, they smell. I don't know if it's this or the wallflower smelling, but it's, I think it's the wallflower. We've decided we want more wallflowers. Go watch that video. But I think these have a scent too. So the corolla or the cone of the flower is one third inch long and is cute little bell shaped. And there are six tiny tepals. So petals and sepals together are tepals that are fused together at the base. And that's why they form a bell. Well, isn't that interesting? They're so fused together that they look like one to me. And they have a sweet scent. So sniff them, but do not ingest them because they um, are not good to eat. This plant is a rhizome, which is how it spreads underground. And at the end of the summer, new upright shoots are formed at the end of stolons, AKA also known as runners. You think of how um, mint has runners that go underground. And these upright shoots are dormant and those upright shoots are called pips. <laughs> the words I keep learning. <laughs> In the spring, the new shoots, also known as pips, <laughs> remain connected underground and begin to grow. That's so awesomeness. This plant is seriously dangerous as it's extremely poisonous to be eaten by both humans and animals. So don't let your little animals eat it. Apparently it has cardiac glycosides, something, there's some words, you can look at my website, which can cause cardiac malfunction and distress. Every single part of this is toxic. The roots, the stems, the leaves, the flowers, the berries, the, apparently berries appear in the autumn. I won't be waiting to film that. And that's why critters such as rabbits and voles and even deer will leave this plant alone. So if you have a problem with those things and you don't have pets in your yard, this is a great plant. Without these enemies, the plant spreads easily. I have this patch of Lily of the Valley in the front yard. And I've learned I have to keep it contained and I have these uh, black plastic things that fall over and don't do a really good job of containing it. I set that up one time because I have all these irises and they were all the lily of the valley were just intertwined with the irises and um, I couldn't appreciate the lily of the valley because um, they're so much shorter than the iris and you couldn't really uh, see them. So I'm 
actually thinking about taking up this whole bed and making uh, an area with some stones that are kind of dug into the ground in the backyard, add to that um, area in the backyard um, because they spread underground. So if I dig the stones down a little bit and insert them, um, maybe they will stay in their space. I absolutely love them, but this is a uh, prime real estate <laughs> in the front yard right next to the road where people can see it. And I think this would be a better place uh, for uh, zinnias. And so I might have a little bit of a job ahead of me.